I heard someone asking if there were any colors that we were going to choose. Was there an answer there? And, and, and I just said, you always, always put out all your colors. Um, like you say, oh, there's no red in this, so I won't put red in my palette. But then I may use red in the sky or I may use red in a shadow. And if you don't have it out, you'll say, ah, I will bother. And Whatever you do, um, don't use any factory green. Yeah, <laughs> Bill is saying, don't, don't use any of those factory, the, the greens out of the tubes, I don't really like the hookers green and the phthalo green. And mm -hmm. uh, I have like so many paints right now, it's ridiculous. So I'm not putting them all out. I just keep buying them. <laughs> okay. well, Kathleen, you can always with two, two blues, two reds and two yellows are pretty much. Yeah, that's where, I, okay. that's where I'm going. I just can't open yeah. half of them right now, so. Still have the hardest time making greens, and then if, if you if you run out of it, trying to recreate the same green. <laughs> but that, but yes. that's but that's the beauty, right? Yeah, that's what makes it interesting is because then the green is slightly different the next time you put it on, and that's yeah. That's okay. You know, you're not painting the inside of your dining room, <laughs> right? That's true. <laughs> there you go. So, as we start here. I have um, slightly rearranged the, the picture that I sent you. So this building, I got it moved over into one of what I call one of my focal points, either um, a third of the way down, a third way in, or a focal point could be down here or here or here. But obviously that White House um, is the brightest it's against some darks, so that's going to stand out for sure. That that that's pretty obvious. Um, I think of the hay rolls as like chess pieces that that step you back in space and lead you back um, almost in a, in a in a serpentine way. So, uh, and I have left. I certainly have left out some. There are a bunch of them over here in the picture. A bunch more up here. I just didn't. Uh, didn't feel like doing so many of them. Um, <laughs> and the other, the other thing is like, like, uh, like, like I've talked to others before. We're going to go from light to dark. Obviously, the sky is going to be early, but some of these, the dark sides of these trees, the dark sides of the uh, the hay bales, that will come later on. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, a wash of water. So, um, it's best for you to, you know, I will probably paint for, this will be four and a half minutes. So it's best for you probably just to watch, even though watching me put clear water on is pretty darn dull. Um, I'm going, I'm not painting the house and I'm not, and I'm stopping at the line of that distant field. Okay, and I'm going, I, this is a little tricky. I'm going around the chimney. I'm actually doing the roof. I'm going to put that roof in because that roof is going to be, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's on a slant, it's part of a drip down. I don't usually. Uh, you want it to move a little bit. Huh? You want it to move a little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, right. Let's see. There's that. I'm painting right. Okay. Okay. But Sharon, you probably don't want it. Don't uh, don't try to paint with me. Yeah. Just watch for this bit, oh. um, and then and then then I'll stop, and then you'll put the paint. You'll put the water on, and you put the paint on. Okay. So I'm looking so diagonally at my piece just to make sure I got water everywhere I want. Okay. And as I've done before and scared some of you, I'm going to take a little. bit. I've got a very large brush. I'm going to throw this kind of reddish tone near my sky because I don't like a sky that's just flat blue uh -huh. and I like to get a little little bit of color in there. <clears throat> I'll let that set up for a second and I'm going to dip into my cerulean blue. If you can look at my palette you'll see some cerulean blue, a pretty good sized brush here and ultramarine blue. And Judy, I don't always do mm -hmm. red. I can if, it, if, if it, you know, I'm doing a combo of those two. Yep. Um, and okay, so 
I'm actually doing a diagonal. You know, the, the, the paint is a diagonal this way, and I'm going to have my sky kind of going a little bit this way. Uh, bring that on down. Uh oh, is somebody on that wants to be on? Yes. Which red, which red did you use? I used alizarin and crimson. Thank you. And yep. Okay. I thought she was it. Okay. Oh. Okay. I, I did click her once, but I missed her. Okay. And I am painting right through my trees, but I'm not painting that distant, distant sort of hay field that's in the background, but I am painting around those trees. Because the trees will be, even though they're not going to be blue, they, they will be a darker version of darker value than we have here. I think I got her in. Kathleen, are you in? Um, I'm in, but I can't see anything. I said like a black screen. You have to turn your camera on. Yeah, you got to turn your camera on. Turn your video on. Turn your video on. Um, There we are. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and let you guys do a little bit of sky. See it at all. We see you. Yeah, we can see you. Uh, oh. Ned, okay. yeah, I've gotten brave. I've gone over a line. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, here we go. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so when you put on the water, you can find all the little errant pieces of erased of eraser that you didn't get off before. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> and while you're painting, I'll talk a little bit. The reason I put a little bit of red in there be is because we are going to be using green for those distant tree lines. So green is the opposite of red. So the red will make the greens look greener. Um, that's why I don't put like maybe a yellow in the sky because the yellow is going to be next to a green tree and it's not going to pop like I like, like the pink does. Red makes the green greener Yes, it's a great pop out of the green. More compliments. Yeah. So I think there are four brand new students in this class. So if I am saying something that's kind of familiar to a lot of you, it's just to catch everybody up on. Um, just some, some, some do's and don'ts or best practices, things like that. So for the house, you did the side and the roof? I did the roof and the side, yeah. Those eventually will be darker than the, the sky itself, so it doesn't really matter that I've gone over it. Nana, you got your sky in there? Yeah, I got my sky. Good, good. OK, I'm going to start on the second part. Now, this, this next section is a little bit wild, so kind of bear with me. I'm going to do the other 2 thirds of the painting at once. Um, and it'll be about, about seven minutes. And it's gonna involve several different colors. I do wanna get that distant hay field. I like that kind of yellowish color, but then down in here, it gets greener. So I'm gonna get all these colors and all be watery mush flowing all over the place. So um, <laughs> bear with me, hang in there. Watch me do it. And then do 15 minutes or so yourself. Okay, so this is now set up a little bit. It's, 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 it's not wet anymore. So I'm taking my clean water and I am gonna go around, my, I'm gonna go around my hay bales, which is uh, interesting. Uh, I gotta remember where they are. Okay, there they are. Yeah, just like, go right through one and you're pissed off. Okay. Um, okay, there's that.
you you shouldn't put your audio on because yeah. like you if you want to ask me a question i can hear you right here you're not but using one, a lot of water are you uh, it looks like you're not putting your brush in the water a lot uh i got a brush that holds a lot oh okay uh okay there we go you're going around the hay bales. I am going around the hay rolls. Yep. Yep. Okay. But I missed before. You went into that field. Into I the... did. I, I yeah. did the field too. Okay. So I've got everything wet from the tree line down. Now I'm going to. What brush do I want now? Oh, I guess I'll stick with this. I'm going to use some raw sienna. And this is kind of, uh, you know, as I've said before, it's kind of like the baby poop yellow. Oh, it's a weird, it's a weird kind of color. So I'm going to go right. That's my, that's my distant hayfield. There we go. And I'm grabbing my little brush. Because right in here, I want to get inside that porch. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to, in a separate part of my palette, I'll take out my sponge and clean things out of here. I'm going to get uh, Oriolan yellow. Okay, Oriolan. When you did the water bed, you know the little um, spikes out of the big hay bale? Did you put water kind of in between those spikes? No, I kind of went right through it. I'll show you what we're going to do there. I'm going to scrape those out later. Okay, Oriolan and Cerulean Blue will make my greenish color. Okay, so I'm going to try to get a, a sharpish line up here. If, if the color looks just right, you know it's too pale. So I, that looked good, but I, I know it will dry uh, lighter. So I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit more. Keep a good edge at that house. Come on, here we go, right to there. What colors did you use for that green? Cerulean and uh, uh, Oriolan. It's a, it's a fairly pale, it's a fairly pale green, a pale yellow. Okay, now, Whew. now, if I feel like I'm painting the side of a barn too much, like going back and forth, I want to loosen up my brushstroke a little bit, a little bit of a X, 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 X. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of um, the raw sienna now. I got to make some lines. Because there are lines for the, um, the the hay, you know, the, the lines where the tractor went. So I'm putting a few of those in. I'm coming back to my Kirk. I got to remix that yellow or green. Yep. So it's different. <laughs> there it goes. It's a little bit different going through here. Oop, there's that. And I don't want some of these edges to set up now. Um, Ellen, here's where I am kind of going around this without making a sharp line. I'm making, I'm making this, the, ed, the edge of this big hay roll, I'm kind of dabbing at. Okay, I got a little bit more of a, the hay, boy, this is starting to dry up on me. Sheep. We got the sun coming. I know. Okay. And we have sun. Hey. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> Okay, so notice this this edge of the hay roll is, is a little bit raggedy. No. Texture. Texture. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going back with some green. You guys are all getting ahead of me now. What the hell happened there? I think I had some real grass get on my. <laughs> and then right in front of the this hay bale, there's a lot of this what this yellow. I'm even going to use a little bit of burnt sienna, um, which is the reddish brown. <clears throat> this is the hay that fell off when uh, 
when it was being rolled, you know, put some of that in there. Now I don't want sharp edges. So now I'm gonna go right into my green, my, my green again. And notice that I don't have any sharp edges, but I have some changes in color through all of this. Okay, a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna strengthen this in the corner. I may get a little bit of ultramarine blue in here just to get the, the foreground a little bit darker. Again, if it starts to look too plain, you wanna mix some things up a little bit. Okay, there we go. And I'll do a little something extra here. I see some hay lines back here. I'm using a small brush now without too much water in it. We'll see what happens. These are some lines of the, some tractor lines in here. Maybe I put a few raw sienna lines. A little bit of shadow of that one. You know, just okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna quit now. I've tried to put enough, a little bit of brushwork in the in the in the field so it's not flat. Added a few different colors. I put in some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue in the bottom, but basically it was the um, the greens and the raw sienna through most of it. And that back field has that nice hot July hay field. That's... Now, Ned, do, yeah. do, does the foreground, is it usually brighter? Or I remember you once said something like deeper, darker, something where maybe that was with water. That was with water, deeper, darker, duller, the reflections of water. I think the colors near you are always a little bit stronger and then they pale out or blue out in the distance. Okay, so, you know, I've got two thirds of the paper covered. I've got 85% of the paper covered right now, except for the hay roll. So I'll give you some time to do that. Yeah, how long do you wait after you put water on for like a, a washer? What's that? How long do you wait? Do you wait like a minute? Like no, I put the, no, I just put right the right I start with the water at the top and I walk my way to the bottom. Then when I put the paint on it, I put the paint at the top and I'm working my way down. Now you've got, the, Sharon, you've got the water on your paper, right? Yeah. Okay. Now when you start to put your colors on, you don't want as much water in your brush as you did when you were putting the water on. Yeah. Because that I'm will- I'm a little nervous that that's gonna to be too dark. Well then put some yellow in. Put some, make, remix it with, mix a little bit of yellow next to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah so. you can actually do this granulated stuff with Right, you know, non -randomly. Yeah, yeah. Now, don't don't worry about. Hey, don't you're not mixing paint, paint, pancake batter. Just once you get a little bit of the mixture, just just go. And the detail around the um, the green and the big one, you did. You did that in the darker brown. The, yeah, the, the burnt sienna a little bit, a little bit. Since the colors are all wet and mushy, you know, you don't have, you know, real lines. So that, don't feel when there's, when there's this empty space, don't feel that you have to be painting the entire time. You know, you don't want to start, uh, I think I've said before, watercolor, watercolor is like golf. The more strokes, the worse you do. So. Um, <laughs> Ready to move on. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want, because you, you guys have just been painting, if you want to take um, 
edge of a tube of paint, or if you have a, 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 a brush like this with a chisel on it, or a credit card, and you wanna make some lines to create a couple of, um, like I've done uh, down here, I've made a few lines just to indicate grasses. I only did that, to, now it's too dry for me to do anything. But if you wanna fuss with a few grass textures, um, now's the time to do it while it's sort of, it's sort of wet. Okay. So my next step, uh, we're, we're gonna do the hay rolls. And we almost always go from light to dark. And you go, well, then why didn't we do the hay rolls first? But if you look carefully at the top edge of the hay roll here, it's darker in the photograph than the grasses. Now in the middle of the hay roll, it's fairly light. It looks like it's like the sun is shining on it. And so the middle of the hay rolls are fairly light, but the top and definitely the bottoms have some darker colors down here. So our, our goal is to um, get the hay rolls to be slightly darker than your grass, your, your lawn or the hay field. Now, if you paint with me right now, your colors in the hay rolls are gonna go right into the grasses. So you, you wanna let this, my, my, my paper is dry. So I can start painting now without worrying about things muddying together, but you wanna be careful um, not to jump in too soon. Okay, so I'm gonna use um, raw sienna, which is that, that yellowy color there. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of raw umber, which is a brownish color there. Now, if you don't have raw umber, you can use burnt umber with a little bit of with a little bit of blue. Ooh, that gets a pretty dark color. And then you get that sort of color. So I'm just sort of experimenting there, but um, okay. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna throw this on here pretty quickly. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna do the tops of this. I'm gonna keep it fairly light in the middle. If I may make some of these just, just. No, I didn't. I, and I just dry brushing. And it waited until green was dry. Yeah, it waited until green was dry. Okay, now I'm just throwing color on. And I, I wanna get rid of these whites out here at the edges. I'll leave some of these whites. I think I kind of like that just happened. I didn't mean for it, but now I'm painting. Let's go, come on, I should have a bigger brush, but I don't have it on the hand. Now this is the darker side. I'm gonna just paint the, the raw sienna. I hope you're just watching me. Don't try to paint now. You're gonna screw things up. Okay, Judy, ease up, ease up. Tie that hand behind your back. <laughs> okay, now, now I've got a tone on here. And while it's wet, I want to add in that little bit of raw umber, sort of near the top. But you didn't wet it. Nope. Okay. nope. Okay. But it was, it. We'll come over and see what he's doing. Yeah, 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 you, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you. Okay, and I, I sense that there are lines in the hay roll that go around, you see that? Mm -hmm. So I like yeah. that. Okay, and these lines, and now I'm gonna flick, uh, Ellen, you were asking about the little flicky things. This, here's the hay coming out. It's a little bit darker color, so it's, uh, Judy, ease up, Judy, hold back, Judy. Okay, <laughs> now at the, at the bottom of the, Hey, Dale, I'm going to get a little, it's definitely darker. If you look at the photograph, it's darker down here. So here, and I'm making a few little flicks in this area here too. Come on, I need Tasha to show you your brush. Uh, I'm too lazy to switch brushes because this color, I got so many good colors in this one. Okay. 
Now this is, this is still fairly wet, so I'm not making any hard lines. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, now I'm going to try and a bigger brush. I'm using a little bit larger brush here. You know, I, want to, I want to slob some darker color on, on this side of the on this side of the hay bale. And a little bit of blue in that. Okay. Oops, too much. Ned, I have a question. Yeah. You know, you'll say, okay, I'm just experimenting here, and you're throwing paint on there. I I'm terrified I'm going to ruin things. Well, I just put a little bit of blue there and it was terrible. So I just <laughs> I just remixed my color and without the blue because the blue got too dark. I mean, I could see it on my palette. You know, I put a piece down. If I don't like it, then I just paint right over it. And you can blot it up. Okay, Is so it here's possible the- possible to shift either your camera or your easel just oh. over to the left a little bit? Okay, let's or, see. Oh, maybe I can just change my view. I just have my, um, I'm probably okay. I can okay. change my And view. I, I see a little, I'm going to go around this. I see where this little, this little hole is in here. I see kind of a nice, oh dear, I, that's not very good. Okay, again, I'm putting a few of these wispies. Wispies. Right? Actually, I'm going to get rid of that. That was too much. It was, would have been too bright. There we go, there's that. Now I'm taking that darkish color and I'm gonna bring it right. I could use a little bit of burnt sienna in there. So down at the bottom here, a little bit darker and okay, I, I just, Okay, I gotta go back to some of the others. I'm starting with a raw, si raw sienna around everything except the middle section. Okay, there it is. So you see that I painted the whole thing. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a, 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 an oil barrel. I've left the middle open. Now, I don't like it. It's not, it's not gonna have that kind of look. I, I can maybe make a few little wispy lines in here. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab my raw. Well, while I've got that, I get I need that to dry. So I'm gonna put some more color on this one. Yeah, it's gonna blend in and make a mess. Okay, I'm putting just just a quick tone of, of raw sienna, kind of a yellowy. Color right, right on these babies. Wow, put too much water on that. Now I've got the big brush and I'm using these teeny little hay bales. So I've got too much water on my brush. That's bugging me. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna. Now the raw umber. I'm gonna go into, or the raw. Oh, Raw umber and burnt, burnt sienna. Put on the side of this hay bale. Making the circles there. The bottom is gonna be a little bit darker. Ned, can I ask you a question while you're painting sure. that stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I squint and look at the photo and the value study I did, I have my hay bales lighter than my field or at least the two that are in the forefront and I agree. so okay and, yep and <laughs> okay, i think so. I, and i'm, I'm going to lighten these up right here i do think barb at the tops of the hay bales it's a little bit it's a little bit darker than the field but oh sure you, it's not uniformly lighter but i i just wondered because yep. it seemed like it was a darker value yeah i'm trying to get this almost too dark so i'm going to i'm going to blot up some of that this one I put way too much color in. Um, good point. And I, you know, I, I blew it, so I'm going back. Um, now put a little little bit of water. This is the shadow on the bottom. Try to do a few little, a little bit, a little bit at the top. And then while I've got it, I'm going to take. I'm gonna take that shadow right out into here. You see how it goes onto the field? It's got a little bit of shadow. 
I'll bring that out with a few little flicks there. Okay, and then this, this is the darker side of this one. Yeah, Barb, these, these things are tricky because they are light, but when, they, when they're in shadow, they're, they're kind of dark. But when you blotted it, that middle one that's near, you know, the, the second, that looks to me much better like that, yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Thank, you for, <laughs> thank you for bringing up that they were getting kind of dark. Ned, um, you must have had something more than just raw sienna, though, in those front hay bales, right? Uh, uh, and the raw, uh, second sienna, one. Yeah, and a little bit of raw umber. Okay, yeah, because the raw sienna is the, the, the far away hills look so much lighter, yeah, even though yeah, we yeah, put that right, on right. heavily. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm doing my last one way back here. I'm going to draw out the shadow while I, while I have it. And later on, near the end of the painting, I may come back into these things. Oh, here's my, uh, let's see. Aha, uh -huh. uh, woohoo. You see that little bit of chisel? Now, you, you don't want to go nutty on this. I, you know, you, you can cut, you kind of do it like, it's like eating jelly beans, you can't stop yourself. So you put a few of them on there and then, uh, I know there's a little bit of dark in here. Okay, I'm trying to get that sense of the, the circular nature, the way the thing goes around, but there are a few of these little hay things. Okay, and I'll put a few out here. Okay, so you guys should be painting now. Judy's already finished hers. <laughs> I gotta be careful I don't go too crazy with this, this scratching because it, but you can only do it when it's just at that moment where it's wet, but not soaking, you know? And whenever not, you're not sure about something, squint your eyes, squint and look at it. Okay, 
I'm gonna let my hay bales sit for a bit. Ned, can you re-wet something and then scratch it? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yep. I don't know, Ellen. Why don't you try it? <laughs> Bill's giving you a hard time, Ellen. Yes, that's that's a little too bold for me, unless I know the answer beforehand. <laughs> I can't try something new unless I know the answer. <laughs> I'm telling you, all those years as a securities lawyer makes you like that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um... Don't don't ask a question you don't already know the answer right. to. <laughs> you remember. make a mistake, it's a disaster. Yeah, yeah, of course. You can't go back and re-wet that, right? <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a little some little uh, little lesson in greens, kind of briefly here before I put the painting back up. <clears throat> the um, okay, I do have this in here. There we go. Okay, so. The greens, the distant greens can, are a real problem because you got a whole line of, of green, but you don't want it all exactly the same. Otherwise, you're not going to notice one tree from another. <clears throat> now, the more distant trees, I'm going to do a little sample color mixture. I'm going to use some raw sienna, which is that yellowy brown, and ultramarine blue. And I get kind of a I get kind of a grayish green with no, nothing, it's just not a, okay. Now, if I want a tree to pop and come toward me, I'm gonna use a stronger yellow, in this case, new gambo yellow. See how bright that is. And then I'll mix the new gambo's yellow with a little bit of ultramarine blue. And now I get a tree. Let me get a little more blue in this one. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It doesn't. Looks good. Okay. <laughs> I'm remembering that I forgot to move it around. Oh, no, yeah. So my, my trees that I want, the, the trees that I'm going to have along near the farmhouse are going to have a brighter yellow. And then the, yeah, and then the, you know, this is just what I've chosen to do. You, you could find a different different combination, but um, you want a, a stronger yellow for the trees that are near you. You want the grayish color yeah. for the distant pine trees or something that's further away. The atmosphere seems to blue things out. So, um, because it does. Because it does. And, and when you make trees, um, another little quickie demo, um, don't make them like lollipops, okay? <laughs> You wanna, you wanna, you wanna make the edges rather irregular. Now, sometimes a tree might have a pear shape. Okay, and you get your blue, you get your blue in there. Kind of waste killing time now. And some of the, some of the dark shadows go into the light side of the, the tree. So that you did get this kind of look. Okay, but you're always gonna have the darker colors on one side. On this painting, the sun's coming from the left, so our, our right sides are gonna be darker. And we have a little bit- first? What's that? 
Did you wet the tree first? No, I didn't. I just oh, put the okay. color right on there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, now I'm going to bring my, my piece back up. Now I've sort of described you a little bit of my idea of, of bright colors coming forward and muted colors in back. Does it make a difference whether you do the muted trees before uh, or the bright trees first? I want it, uh, well, I don't want to do, I don't want to try to paint the muted trees behind the bright trees. Because that will. No, but which, uh, how long I see You see what I mean? So you want the distant muted colors on first and then the stronger ones on top of those. Okay, so I've talked to you about greens, but uh, <laughs> before I do any of this, I need a little bit of mountain because I can't put the trees, I can't put the mountain in after the tree. So, uh, so I've got a, a, a ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue with a little bit of alizarin in it. So it becomes a little purpley. There's a little dip there. And there's my purple magic mountain's majesty. I'm throwing this all down here. And I am gonna do I'm gonna take this color right down. I'm gonna go around. I, I see there are four trees I'm gonna make bright. I'm gonna paint this right down around. Okay. So this is my, my purpley color, and I'm just painting it right down. Uh, ultramarine and, yeah. And Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that, that, that mountain I, I wanna leave. It, it probably could be a little bluer. So maybe I grab a little more blue. Nah, I don't, I don't wanna mess with it. If I go into it now, I'll screw it up. Okay. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do my distant trees over on the left side. Okay, the raw sienna and the blue. There we go. And here's this one funny little tree in the background. I don't, I don't know what kind it is, but it's, it's got a kind of ir funny irregular shape. And here's the color, this is the color I was showing you. This is a distant, I want a good straight line right at that hay field. I'm gonna go around this bush. Oh, shoot. Oh. Okay. And I'm gonna go around my chimney. I should have done the, the roof of the house the same color as the mountain. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna reload a little bit of blue, a little bit of raw sienna. I don't mind that they're not. Now at the tops of these trees, I wanna make them kind of irregular. Come on, cheapers. Now I'm not painting into this tree because I'm gonna use that bright yellow against that. And I'm painting around that roof, that little shed roof. Now this is now dry, so I can go back. Again with that grayish green. Who's dog, who's dog? Straight line right here, edge of the field. I need that straight. Oh boy, right underneath that. There we go, okay. Come on, there we go. Okay, now these are, there were some pine trees kicking around out here, I think. I'm gonna put a few of them up here. I'm gonna go around. This is the tree that's gonna have bright, bright color around it. Uh, 
Oh wow, I feel like tired. Okay. Again, this is that grayish green. I'm putting a little bit of pine trees back here. And then it comes down and I may put in a little bit of aureola. Good sharp edge there. And right at the right at near the field, it's going to be a little that pretty dark, didn't I? Putting a little bit of darks right at the bottom of the tree line. Okay. Now I'm gonna while this is still a little bit wet, I'm gonna get that new gambos. The blue. New bows. I'm going to throw it in. Boom, 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 boom. Boop, boop, boop. So the new gamboge is brighter than the background color. And the shadow side of it is darker than the background color. Come on. I need to get darker and to get a green darker. What color do you add to it? Red. Blue. Oops, too much there. That's called Christmas. Yep. So this is the dark side of this tree here. There's the trunk. The bottom is dark. And then the shadow underneath the tree is going to go right along the edge of there. Okay. Start again with the bright yellow. Boom, boom, boom. And then the, well, let's do it. Let's do it twice. Bright yellow on both big trees. Oops. Bright yellow here. Okay, then come back with the green, blue. So the bottom of the tree is going to be dark because it's in shadow. The bottom kind of scoop. So the photograph is like late summer. When yep. early <laughs> and I'm painting a little bit of shadow under these trees and that helps to define the edge of that field. And there we go. Okay, so I guess you guys are already painted anyway. So I'm, I'm just gonna finish the trees that I've got going here. The, the background trees, it was, um... That was the Sienna Ross. Oh, oh, yes. Yep. Or, Ultra, Sienna, right? Yeah, Ross Sienna, which is that kind of brownish color. Yeah. And yep. Yep. Wow. And the other dark piece of foliage I forgot to do is that this is really, I have a bush. I put a bush in front of this distant uh, 
hay bale. So I'm going to put those same color greens in that bush. Did you do your dark greens to like the forest part first, or did you do the tree trees for the foreground first? Which are you talking about? I did the distant tree line first. First, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the gray greens. The grayish greens, yep. And the bush in front of the house, that would be a, a brighter green. Yeah, I have the same as the other, same as the other maple trees. Uh -huh. Yep. <clears throat> so I wonder if Neil knows why the Blue Ridge Mountains are the Blue Ridge Mountains. Why they're called the Blue Ridge Mountains? Or? Because of the humidity. Oh, is that right? The sunlight. <clears throat> yeah. You know, you're saying because of the blue sky? Yeah, yeah. It's the humidity. In the distance. Sure, sure. It gets really bad there in summer. What color did you use towards what color did you use towards the right of the big tree? And here I'll ask you a question. He's coming back. Come all turn blue. All turn to rain blue. Yeah, sorry, Ellen. I was uh, refreshing my water. Ultramarine blue with, with the uh, new gambos yellow was, was the right side of those dark trees.
Well, I don't have new gamboge, but I have um, yellow ochre. That's not bright enough. That that yellow ochre is more like raw sienna. Um, do you have Hansa yellow or? Yeah. Cadmium yellow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something is a little more intense than that grayish green in the background. Brown on that right side of the shadow. Uh, that, that was some blue in it, I think. The shadow of the tree, or oh, a dark like an ultramarine. Yeah, yeah. But you have a little bit more gold. gold. Yeah, I can't I actually, they're just the green or something. Um, the same green that I had in you know, already on my brush. I was sort of being lazy. Laziness is the mother of invention. Brain for us kids. I learned more ways of not tying my shoes from my son. <laughs> So now I'm curious. I, I know she's saying a lot. Huh? Uh, do you feel like you have more control? I, I do, I do. Well, it also, when I, uh, Sharon, think of it, when I'm drawing a line, yeah. I don't draw it with my arm, I go like this with my legs. I move ah. my, I do move my hips. So my whole body is going back and forth like this. Um, because, Sharon, take a look at me. Because a lot of what happens, people who draw just with their arm, yeah. because you're, they almost draw it like a, their lines will go down like an arc, like an arc because they're pivoting on their elbow. They're going, yeah. because their elbow, they might could be sitting right here, like drawing a line, but try to draw it straight, but they end up, it droops. Yeah. Um, sure. It also keeps me from getting too close to the picture where I can get finicky about details. And, uh -huh. So the pink behind the trees, um, don't worry about it. I mean, it's the, the what behind the trees? Pinkishness. It was in the, in the sky. Yeah. No. No, because the pink, the pink can help you darken your green or get you closer to black. In some way, we want to put on some light. Should I be really careful about getting the young roots? But take that color right down to the roots. Don't, don't be that kind of. Yeah. Right. Um. 
Um, well, this came out of the left do the same thing with it. All right. So make sure we get to the dark, but this, this is going to be darker than this. Okay. This is going to be darker than that. So you're going to be right up that edge. So it can't be, um, it can't be and so these other the other trees could be um these could be considered background trees, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. All this stuff and this one. Oh, yeah. Well, it depends on how you get it. Yeah, you can do this. Decide where I want it. Yeah, I, I actually had it on my board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to sort of decide. That one I saw is boring. Yeah. These these all blended together right inside. I wanted these two to jump out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kirk, I just saw there's a car in the driveway next to the farmhouse, so I think we'll have to put that in. <laughs> you know, the funny thing, I've, I've, I've added <laughs> a car and the picnic table. <laughs> you did. Yeah, I and, I, and I decided to add a uh, tree swing. <laughs> <laughs> I think the picnic table is important, so I put it in too. Does anybody want to put a farmhand, a farmhand snoozing next to the hay bale? <laughs> we need Tom Sawyer. I want to see the piece of hay sticking out of his mouth. Right, perfect. Get hey, the could be leaning brush. against one of the bales of hay where you know the the, uh, yep. the owner doesn't see him. Exactly, and he's got one 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 knee up while he's sitting there. <laughs> yeah, right in the shade. <laughs> exactly. Has anybody ever worked on a farm? Oh, yeah. 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 I used to do that during the summer. I enjoy going back to school in the war spring. <laughs> <laughs> Of making a ton of money. We yeah. need Maria here to talk about uh, work on the farm. Saving money and not spending it because there's no, no time anything to spend it on. Well, the thing about hay, and I've helped the farmers the US move hay, hay bales into the into the barn for the season. It's always hot because that's when they they cut it. But then if you wear a t-shirt, you are going to get so cut up from the little hay things on your arm. You look like you've gone through nettles or a, or a, or a briar patch. So you've got to wear a heavy shirt, <laughs> yet you're hot as blazes. I don't know if it's a local thing, but I mean, if you go out west here, you know, into the Shenandoah area, yeah. you see bales of hay, they're all wrapped in white. Gauze, well, we have, plastic we have yeah. that up here too. We have that here too. Yeah. 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 So like, now like we, the, this theme doesn't even work anymore. There. <laughs> right. <laughs> that wouldn't make nearly as interesting a painting. They look like giant mushrooms oh, yeah. or mozzarella. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So you're gonna be a minute? Sure. <laughs> okay, we're we're down to the last the last 15 minutes of painting, and it's just down to little details and we haven't done the house yet, so that's where we gotta put some details in there. And then maybe you go back and you you look back at the hay bales, and now that everything else is filled in, are the hay bales too light or too dark? They need more, more, uh, more twigs on them or little things. Okay, um, so now I'm going to start in on the on the house details. I 
uh, I'm getting my probably my smallest smallest brush. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the roof with a little bit of a lizard crimson and ultramarine blue. Picking up, it's gonna be the pinky side of purple. I'm putting this in now. So it'll be a reddish purple. There we go. Now the side of the house, I'm gonna mix a little more blue and that's going to be a bluish purple. And I'm letting that, that, that edge line just blend together. It's not going to bother me. You mean leave? Oh, no, no. Like a rat leaving a sinking ship? No, and now I'm going to do... I'm going to go up this, the... the, the uh, I'm gonna leave a little bit of white right there so it, you can see the edge of the roof. And even though the, the photograph doesn't have it, this shadow is much less wide than this shadow. Okay, and I have a little bit of a shadow in this little, little triangular part of the this whole thing, and I'm going to put a few little marks down here. This this porch I've kind of screwed up, but there there it is. Now a little bit of uh, windows. Let's see. I'm going to say that the shade is down halfway, so I'm in the upper half of these windows. So I'm putting a little bit of raw sienna there, and then using kind of a bluish color at the bottom half, but I, I leave a little bit of a space so you feel like there's a window mullion there. Then boom, 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 boom. Leave it at that. Uh, oh, I know. And I cheated while you guys were doing your trees. I put a little bit of red there so for my chimney. And now I'm just giving a, a slight shadow on the chimney. You see it in the video. Which is probably a little too dark. <clears throat> now, look at my thing. And I go, you know, the, the, whites, the whites here bug me. I don't like them. So I'm going to take that raw sienna. And I'm going to kill some of them, get rid of them. Not all of them, but maybe a couple, just so that they don't, because I've got that white house there. And now down here, I might do some details. Oh, uh, raw sienna and uh, cerulean blue. And I'm gonna do what's called dry brush. Where you, you don't put a lot of, not too much water on your brush. And you kind of just scrape Make a few little marks like this using the side of the brush to create some sort of texture. And maybe I do a few other places. Okay, and I definitely gotta do it in the foreground. Probably should use a bigger brush, but I'm too lazy to pick it up. <clears throat> no, that's the, the four inch green or six inch green. Oh, down the middle of it? This is what you're hearing. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> that's not a crop. If, if, if there's a small one under that, that's not a crop of green, right? No, this is the drain part for me. Oh, okay. Okay, just a little bit of that dry brush. You can maybe swoo, uh, do a little bit in the, uh, on the lines there. You gotta be careful, you know, we'll do it. And the lines are closer together the further they get back from you. 
because the perspective works that way. And then the last thing I'll do, and I've done this before, I take a little bit of blue and the Oriolan maybe. And I do my little, come on, let me get that. Oops, that may be too much. I like to put a little bit of splatter, a little bit of texture down here. This is my, my ultramarine blue and Oriolan, so it's my greenish color. And just, just creating a little bit of texture down there where it kind of looked like it was a little bit boring. And this is where I can overdo it too. If I get a little bit of red in here, throwing some red in against the, there we go. There. That just kind of loosens up the foreground. I'm, I'm looking back at my hay bales thinking, okay, they look okay. This edge looks a little sharp, so I'm gonna take it out. That edge looks a little sharp, so I'm gonna pull it out. All right. Pull a little bit of color off of that distant one. It got a little bit too dark. This one, uh, get a little more light on the top of it. Okay, and I think I'm, I think I got it. Um, Now, what's that water sound? Okay, good. I think I'm going to leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kind of rough up the foreground a little bit <clears throat> and texture, but uh, keep things kind of clean and bright in the back. And I do think this whole painting leads your eye toward that toward that house um, with a couple of windows, a couple of dark spots. Um, one of the reasons you, not only does your eye go there because of its geometry, but also you've got the darkest dark <clears throat> against the lightest light. And that's where your eye will always go. Um, bright, light and dark contrast. So, all right, good, 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 good. Um, as you guys continue to work, I'm doing a little bit of cleanup. Um, <clears throat> for those of you you are new, if you can take a, work on these for uh, this afternoon or tomorrow, and then if you take a picture and email it to me sometime um, Wednesday, um, certainly before four o'clock, because we'll do a critique at five o'clock on Wednesday. And uh, I'll put a slideshow of everybody's painting and we can look through and see, uh, see Kirk's picnic tables and uh, Josh's farmer and... Uh, um, whatever else you guys have devised to add into this painting. Um, well, I'm looking at these, boy, do I need to get these things darker? I don't want to get them too dark. I'm looking at the photograph. This, the, the, the sides of the hay bales are really dark. I don't really think I want to get them that black. You know, am I painting the photograph or am I painting a feeling of a hay wall?
we, I don't think we've ever finished 10 minutes early. This is, uh, maybe I rushed you guys. No. And don't forget, each time you, you paint, really rinse out your brushes one more time. You don't want to start to paint a sky next week and have green still left over in your brush. That would make a mess. So a quick rinse is always good. Don't use your fingers to, to massage the brush. That's, that's not good for the bristles. Um, let, them, let them dry horizontally. and. Uh, They'll be good, they'll last you a good long time. There's no reason to wash them with detergent or anything like that, that's for sure. <clears throat> Don't put the strangers in then. Mm -hmm. And if you spritz your colors with water when you put them away, that little fine film of water will keep them moist for another time. If you leave them out, they'll, they'll dry and they'll need to reload. <clears throat> Hey, Ned, I'm going to take off. Thanks so much for doing this. Okay, good. You playing doubles this afternoon, or what are you up to? Uh, hitting tennis with Susan, and uh, I, I, my golf pro is trying to turn me, turn me into a different uh, a, a different stroke on my golf. <laughs> Look oh, at that, man. That is the worst <laughs> idea ever, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that ruins your confidence. You know, I know. You can hit it on the range, and then you get out to the golf course, and you, you, you now now you're in between swings. And exactly, that's right, awesome. you know, it's only going to take a thousand hours to learn a new. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kirk. Good to see you. Send, send us your painting. Wait, later take, care. take care, Kirk. I'm going to sign off too. Okay, <laughs> Kathy. Take care. Me yep. too. Bye bye. Bye, Ned. Me too. Bye, bye Ned. Ned. Send, I'll Great. send you variant variations as I go along. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready. Okay. Thank you, Ned. Thank you. Five o'clock okay. Wednesday, right? Five o'clock Wednesday for critique. I'll send a Zoom out the night before. Thanks, Ned. Okay. Thanks, Ned. Yep. Thanks, Ned. Okay. Talk to you later.